In this video, we're going to look at what exactly a normal map is and how does it contribute in our scene file. So to begin with, what I have over here is I have two different files that currently look exactly the same or quite similar. And this is what we would call a normal map. And a normal map pretty much looks the same. Uh, on both of these meshes, uh, of course, it's the same map. But the difference is that uh, one of the meshes are high res and one of the mesh is a low res mesh, what we call as a plane. Uh, so normal maps generally are meant to affect light, how light reacts to a particular mesh, uh, so-called faking light to look different uh, on a texture or with a texture. So what I have over here is I have a lighting example where if I switch on my lights and shadows, I have a result of this normal map playable or uh, playable but displayed over here. And on the left hand side, what we see is we see a high res geometry with a spear and with a plane around there. And on the right hand side, we see the result baked down on a plane. Now, I'll go through tutorials on how to bake later on, but for now, just try to understand that uh, this information is transferred to this particular plane information using the UVs. So we see our UV over here. We'll see that uh, the UVs are just completely straight and uh, pretty much from zero to one. So what we see is when we change the direction of light, of course, at certain angles, uh, we sort of see that um, a result changes on this mesh, right? Uh, particularly on this mesh, but here's a result in the texture form. So normal map primarily is meant to affect uh, the result with the texture, right? And in games, they need this, they use this quite a lot because of the low computation that is uh, required to produce these results. And um, now we sort of just go through on why exactly a normal map looks like this. Why is it red, green, blue, and also this weird purplish color. So uh, for that, uh, what I'm going to come is I'm going to come to Photoshop. And here I'm going to sort of try to explain uh, the different uh, parts of this normal map. Right. So begin with, this is what we have. Uh, this is on the UV, uh, this is the 2D part of it. Um, what we see over here is we have the red color on the right hand side, uh, which we would refer to as the X axis. And on from top, we'll have the green color, which refers to as the Y axis. And in this case, because blue is currently facing me, or particularly this view or this top view, um, we'll keep blue just on the outside. Right? So imagine this was x, y, and z axis or coordinates on this normal map. Uh, we'll see where do they actually come from. So if we come to our channels, and if we actually split it down into red, green, and blue, what you see is we get these three different uh, sort of breakdowns of these different colors. So I'll go through one particular breakdown, and uh, this let me just go back to RGB. Right? So what I have over here is I have this geometry, uh, I have this plane, which is uh, of course baked in geometry information. And what I see, this is the red axis, right? In this case, uh, this being a value of one and this being a value of zero, right? Now this of course is the half sphere. So in Maya, if we come and take a look, uh, if we hide these guys, uh, if we come to uh, front view, of course, I'm coming in from the world space uh, based on our, uh, this is our world space, just, just so that we understand where we are. Um, you see this red axis is around here. Now, uh, don't don't uh, don't get confused in terms of red axis being over here. Uh, normal maps are not really following world space 100%. They really depend on the tangent um, of the object uh, that is currently there. Uh, so even though we have green over here, but actually green is facing up, doesn't mean that green will be facing up over here, right? So the axes are based off uh, from where it is baked, which I'll come through in a while. So in initially, what you want to just look at is we want to look at the three different channels. And right now, we're going to see a value of red being the highest on this side, and the value of red being the lowest on the left-hand side. What we want to calculate now is the mid-value 
right? That, that's what why we can understand or how we can understand the the color. Uh, why is that color purplish, bluish color? Yeah. So I have this in Maya. I uh, also have the same screenshot uh, in Photoshop, and I just want to go to uh, this value range for all the three different channels uh, separately. So the red channel coming in from the right, value one, uh, is half. Uh, normally people label this as 0 0.5 in between, but um, we're just going to take it as half for now. Uh, so it's easier to calculate certain things. Then what we have is uh, just to sort of colorize this uh, grayscale red channel, we have 2 by 5 value range on the right and 0 on the left, and we have 128 in between. Now, 128 and 127, uh, or 127.5, um, this is a very big topic to sort of go through. I just rounded off to 128. Uh, there are many people out there who would say 127, but after careful consideration, I think 128 simplifies the understanding process. And last but not least, uh, we have some formula just to calculate the mid value on how did I get 128. So on the left hand side, here we see around this area is we see between 0 to 2 5 there are roughly 256 channels for each three colors, right? R, G, B, and B. And this roughly comes to 256 integers. Why we consider of integers? Because uh, when we are converting vector values from normal maps, uh, we just want to run it off to an integer in terms of, uh, in terms of pixel at least. So what we have on the mid value here is what you can see is to to get the mid value in this says in this case 128. Uh, what I'm, what I'm, ooh, let me just change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of take the red value. In this case, uh, we can take the red axis being or the red color being 2 by 5, and I'm going to just divide that by the x value. In this case. Uh, x value being half that means is since this is what we want so let me just change my brush size uh, just change my heart. so here we have one and then we have zero and what we're going to do is we're going to sort of check the 0 0.5 value okay. so we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to take this value divide by half in this case divide by two you can even multiply 2 by 5 multiplied by 0 0.5 if you like 0 0.5 value. And what you should end up is you should end up with 127.5. Uh, you want to just round it off to 128. Uh, the articles are linked to why exactly um, I say so, these sort of things. So you want to round it off to 128 uh, so that it's much more easier to understand. Okay. Um, so now we'll go through the green channel. So we'll understand uh, the green channel, which is similar to the red channel. So in the green channel, we have the same value from top to down. Top being, in this case, uh, I'm looking at it from the top view. Uh, from this side, I'm currently looking at it from the right view. Um, and what I'm actually doing is, I'm actually just looking at the half sphere. And this is a value of 1. And this is a value of 0. And in between is half. Now to get the half, we need to understand the value range. In this case, 2 over 5, 0, and 128 roughly comes to half. How, how do we get 128? Because of 256 integers, because even though 0 to 2 over 5 is how Photoshop reads it has, um, that even though 0 is technically no value, but it still counts as a value, uh, we just want to divide it off. In this case, we get 128 once again, because it's 1 to 0, and half of that is roughly 128. Same thing. Uh, similarly, for the blue channel, it might look a bit different. So in this case, the blue channel is facing us. And because I just have a very so-called drawing up over there, um, which is roughly the top view and the down view, which we're not really going to calculate. Now, of course, in normal maps, for the z-axis, you have the positive one and the negative one. Uh, the negative one is not really calculated, so we're not going to really talk on that. Um, so in this case, in terms of value, yeah, it's a bit different. Yeah, there's no zero per se. There's only half, or in this case, 0.5. So if we check this value, that's roughly a grayscale of uh, 0.5. So if you come to HSB, you can see it's roughly 0.5. It's like 50 over there, that one small pixel at the side. And 
in the center what you start seeing is it's more towards white like 99 okay? so in this case if you don't take a value range of 255 from here right and this half will once again be 128 so once again we are trying to find the mid value in this case the mid value of the spear right so for now if we take this particular mid value or the center of the spear we divide by that divide that by one uh, we roughly get the same value which is 255 so what we end up with is we end up with a very cool color not a cool color but if it changes to rgb sliders what we end up with is 128 128 and 255 right and this particular color is uh, this particular creation uh, needs you need to understand from where the axes come from in this case red being from the right hand side green being from the top and this center value is roughly half of 2 by 5 right? uh, and in terms of blue because we're baking it from the top view or in this case top of the plane right that's why we just get the value 2 by 5 right? which is divided by 1 which is 255 itself right and that's why we get this if I fill this entire color we get this null map color over here now if we come to Maya if we come to Maya and we see it from the same view so let's say we see that's that was a red one uh, let's we hide this and we show in this case I show the green one so if you see a green channel so it's the same thing right so this being green one this being green zero in this case for blue blue comes technically from the top right so in this case this being blue and then blue goes down all the way it's like half of blue and then actually blue comes down over there roughly as zero but that's not calculated and we won't really consider that at this point right? so this is why um, the colors are the way they are so if i come into this plane and now we start seeing uh, we can see that when we move our lighting let's come back to our lighting um, because of these axis values oh sorry about that um, why is blue particularly from top in this case why is it baking from the top view to understand this we just need to understand something called as vertex normals so if I just view my vertex normals all the way up the bake result comes from the vertex uh, vertex normals or it bakes from the vertex normals and that is uh, one of the things that you need to understand so not particularly bakes from the top view rather it just bakes from wherever the vertexes are of the low poly mesh right? and of course then it depends on bake uh, how far the bake goes um, and many other things right um, now there are a few websites that uh, sort of talk about uh, why uh, why is it 128 versus 127.5 uh, so for that we have certain links over here um, so of course this is Wikipedia um, you guys can sort of see some examples of uh, why is the tone mapping yellow purple um, in other different places uh, you can also read about uh, from polycon forum about normal maps and um, there's this sort of article going around where you are fixing uh, mirrored normals and they sort of talk about why exactly is it uh, is 127 127.5 versus 128 um, yeah, so you can sort of read this discussion and then another discussion which is pretty useful as to understanding 8-bit uh, components, uh, understanding uh, unsigned normal maps versus signed normal maps. Uh, versus, there's another place um, that talks about uh, normal mapping. This is pretty simple to understand. Uh, so there are 256 integers values out of 0 to 255. Uh, these are, this is the most important thing to understand uh, to sort of understand why is it that particular color and not well, 127 why is it 128 because there's some calculation that goes around and normalizing it from 0 to 1 uh, from minus 1 to 1 and then 0 to 1 and then 0 to 5 5 and all that stuff and you can sort of read about it and of course another website as of uh, no website but it's more about a question and answer that talks about it okay so those resources are pretty useful but I guess for artists you just need to understand why uh, the normal map is particular in that color and how do we fix it and how does it affect our lights and uh, is there a way to bake perfectly right 
So we'll be talking about some of these stuff later on. So hopefully this tutorial uh, helps you guys understand about normal maps. Uh, so once again, the conclusion is normal maps particularly are used for lights, how light reacts to a particular geometry. Normal maps are stored in a texture format. That texture tells a particular light uh, how it should be read. Uh, and those values, in this case, this is called a tangent space normal map. Uh, which is different from object space normal map. Um, I think you guys can just uh, research more on that. And uh, these are based on the objects itself. So this green being the uh, from where the camera bakes, or from where the object is baked. That's roughly the up axis. And uh, the camera over the place that it bakes from, that's always the one that's blue. Right? So the Y and the uh, X is always uh, calculated after that. So hopefully this helps you guys understand normal maps and see you around in the next video. Bye-bye.